This playthrough is rated M for Mature. It was a dark and stormy night for hard-boiled action. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Well, we're back here with another episode of Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne. The last episode, we started a journey, ended up in a hospital. Apparently, some people have died. Mona Sex was involved. And a lot of confusing things that we're being chased after because of some situations. So now we have to figure out how we got to this point and see if we can tie the pieces together. So now we're in this uh, back in time and we're at this warehouse and apparently we heard some shots and a woman being threatened. Let's go inside and see if we can find her. Go, Max, go. Here he comes, here comes Max Racer. He's a With deep. no way to deal with the past, I kept my eyes on the road, off the rear view mirror and the road kill behind me. I chased lesser mysteries, other people's crimes. Exactly, just like I was about to finish my song, but then he had to talk. Well, that was probably more interesting anyway. Standard, standard warehouse. Hmm. No people around? Where'd that noise come from? like mine you can only think in metaphors they had killed the love of my life they were going to pay castling insurance companies because your home is your castle for more information call now 555 castle Television is as fun as mirrors. Two days and two nights non-stop. The cult series Address Unknown. All the episodes, all the madness in our return to Sender Marathon. A glass of Gold Touch Brandy to make you feel rich and famous. Hi, have we met before? Is this seat taken? <laughs> Gold Touch Brandy, a taste of gold. Americans avenge your 9mm handgun when it's too late to protect your loved ones. No! 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 Americans Avenger for the payback dime. To order now, call 555-GUN and you will receive a year's worth of ammunition absolutely free. <laughs> and Laura Norder in Max Heat 7. Late night adult entertainment after midnight. Pleased to meet you, dearest of all my friends. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Vladimir Lee. I invite you to the grand opening of my restaurant. Vodka, come, make a scene. You will be seen. Clear as good. Vodka. Style, grace, and taste. Opening soon. Who's the man with nothing to lose? Who's the grimiest, cat-busting, metaphor-spewing, avenging badass in the ghetto? That's right. Dick Justice. Clean Sing Cleaning Products. After dirty business, come clean with us. Dial 555 Clean. That's 555 Clean. Clean Sing Cleaning Products. The choice of crime scene cleanup services.
boy! I don't mean to brag, but give me a bat and a zombie head, and I'll hit a home run every single time. A girl! Yawn. Wake me up when you're done trying to impress me. An army of freaking zombie demons from outer space. <laughs> and a whole lot of cartoon kung fu butt kicking. <laughs> The Adventures of Captain Baseball Bat Boy! In the Brooklyn School for the Blind, we know that seeing is not the same as believing. The Brooklyn School for the Blind, our doors are open. Hi, you've called Dangerous Liaison. Call 555-PSFY when you want to do more than just talk. Dangerous Liaison. Our girls are eager to hear from you. Intervectum, 600 milligrams. A serious painkiller for serious pain. When I got shot in the line of duty as a police officer, Intervectum was all I took for the pain. Intervectum kills your pain. Intervectum, 600 milligrams. A serious painkiller for serious pain. Raconteur Magazine says it is the best costume drama since the tragic affairs of Jonathan Nightingale. Elegance says it has more melodrama than the award-winning A Sudden Loss of Innocence. Silk and Lace gives it five handkerchiefs. Lords and Ladies continues with all new episodes. Castling Insurance Companies, because your home is your castle. For more information, call now, 555-CASTLE. Okay, I think we're repeating now, so sorry, I got distracted by the TV. I don't know if I'm going to leave this in or I'll add it at the end of the video, it's hard to say. Because obviously you don't want to watch me sitting here for five minutes looking at the TV. Uh, yeah, I think it starts repeating after this. I'll give it a once more. Because it does, it does have an it will it doesn't it doesn't have a straightforward ending like that one one TV. It, it'll keep repeating after a bit. Okay, I think it's resetting. So. A glass of gold touch brandy. Yeah. So uh, I I do like the fact that they have like these custom uh, you know ads everywhere in the game like for fake stuff. Obviously, if it was real stuff, yeah, I'd be kind of annoyed. But I don't. Know, I think I you know this game has its own sense of humor about things. Whether it's laugh out loud, that's not the case, but. We'll see what happens. Like I said, I may or may not have it. NYPD! Whoa! Easy, officer. Easy. Just cleaning the place. Come on, officer. It's all legit. I work for the squeaky cleaning company. You didn't hear anything suspicious just now? No, no. Oh, wait! <laughs> you mean the gun workshop upstairs? Take me there. Move. Sure, officer. If that's what you want. You know, officer, you cops got it easy. All you have to do is go to the crime scene and look around a bit. We're the ones who have to clean up that mess, brains, and guts and shit. Detective. DT, huh? You know what I mean. <laughs> you get the credit, what do we get? Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. I was just waiting for anything. Oh, there's dialogue to appear. Don't try anything funny. After you, detective. What? You just gotta lock the door on me, huh? Why don't you go in? Yeah, whatever. Oh, detective, I've got something for you. Shoot! Haha. Oh, ah! -ha. Yeah, did. Oh, he was gonna he was gonna try to shoot us. What a surprise. I know I probably shouldn't be doing the whole dodge every other second, but who masquerading as cleaners. But I can't help myself. I must dodge slow dodge every time. Yeah, it was like uh yeah, it was like they were trying to clean up, literally and figuratively. Yeah, just seeing if there's any There we go. Just hope we won't run into any more. Yep. Never 
were standing in front of a door, just in case someone might be saying there was a shotgun or something like that. Not a violent man by nature, but it pisses me off more than anything when they do that. It's an insult. That's what it is. If we're trying to clean the place, they should have more sense than to bleed on the floor. That's the ticket. We should find a way to kill them without spilling any blood. You know, gas them or poison or something. Now, yeah, that would be that would be cleaner. Okay, I was wondering if they had any more dialogue. Yeah, I can't help it even though I'm right behind the dude. Usually they go, ah, usually means they're dead, so. I could bullet time, like just hold, and just press the button down, but yeah, it's fine. All right. So I just kill it now. Kaufman's oh. waiting in the van. The hardware's been bad. As soon as the guys get Jackie Brown in there taken care of, we're done. Okay, I'll round up the crew, make sure the cleanup's done. Bodies, blood, prints, air, mags, empty brass. When we're out of here, there won't be a shred of evidence for the cops to find. Just a ghost story. Yeah, I remember the last uh, last game. They had quite a few conversations you could you could listen to between that between other characters. Usually, they eventually would get like a silly at times, like comedic and stuff like that. I don't remember as much of this game as I do the first one. For some reason, I remember the first one pretty well, not perfectly, but I remember it pretty well overall. This one, even though this is technically a better game in terms of gameplay and everything else, but there. something about something about the the uh, the first game, just despite everything, just makes it a little bit more memorable for me. But not saying that ah, not saying that this game is bad. I'm just saying. Kind of like how like I really like the original Resident Evil more than the remake, even though the remake is is a be much better game, just overall storytelling, whatever. But I don't know, just something about. The room looked like gun storage, but it had been cleaned out. But the whole B-movie aesthetic and just humor of it and everything just, I don't know, just makes it more enjoyable to me. But like I said, overall, I'd still say the first or the first or remake Resident Evil is much better. Just I'm just saying from a personal standpoint. Oh yeah, Vladimir, this is like Vladimir's location. So from he was from the first game, so... The answering machine had a message on it. A message of death? sure to whistle over the phone of course but and yeah well, another thing about this game is they they got rid of a lot of the complicated like platforming that was like in the first game so it's a little bit more of a, uh, a pretty smooth experience overall but I don't know there's something about like the weirdness of the design of the game the first one they like but we we're playing this game obviously I'm not here to crap all over the second game because it is still a good game I'm just you know sometimes I'll get certain like moods or descriptions where I'm like, oh, I talk about other games while the, while the game I'm playing, you know, is different. Yeah, it's usually the problem with a lot of sequels is that they usually get streamlined after a point, so what made the first game kind of strange or unique gets lost in the lost trying to make it more appealing to all audiences, you know. Ooh. Shotgun ammo. Just need a shotgun though. Although we're playing detective mode, so I shouldn't have too much trouble, but. Yeah, it looks like someone's in here. Get beat. Enough chit chat. Finish her. Wait! The mob guys attacked us! I have no beef with you guys! You took them out! Listen, I work for Vladimir! Honey, you work for no one. Uh, what do you want? We we can. NYPD, drop him! Ah! 
Punisher! Oh, God, no! Like all the bad things in my life, it started with the death of a woman. I couldn't save her. After him, don't let him get away. You know, it kind of reminds me of, uh... <laughs> it kind of reminds me of, a uh, Gun, actually, the, that video game. I don't want to spoil too much, but... You're not supposed to cuddle with her afterwards. We need to wrap this up. Coffin wants us to move. I guess if I mention anything further, it'd spoil that game. But, uh, I should play that one of these days. It was actually not a bad game. It's really short. You could be, like, a couple hours. Uh, kind of a uh, interesting Western game. It was supposed to, it came on the heels of, like, Red Dead. And, uh, it does some things that, like, are, were surprising to me in a game, like, for certain story beats and stuff like that. But, yeah, she didn't get to do much. She just got shot in the head, so. Oh, well. Yeah, let's swap back to the pistols for now. Yeah, we got ourselves a 9mm from those guys, so. Well. Damn. Die. Ah! Yeah, if you use the directional buttons, you can swap between your uh, weapon types. Oh, we did get a shotgun. Oh, maybe you grab grabbing the ammo gave it to me. No, anyway, we'll use the shotgun. Actually, I'll probably use the pistols since I have more bullets on this. Yeah, why do a lot of women keep dying in front of Max Payne? Is there something going on here? Oh. Ah. Why did I switch my ammo out? Why did I do that? Alright, whatever. Yeah, for some reason I switched to the, the shotgun. Oh, we got a sawed off shotgun. Moist. Sawed off shotgun usually it has like a shorter, it only has like a couple bullets, but it's a little bit more powerful. But I prefer uh, handguns, but I'll change it out every once in a while. Because shotguns will usually one shot most dudes if you get close to them. Yeah, it looks like our boys in blue finally got here. It took them a while. Come on. Finally. Hey! Mona? Max, we gotta stop meeting like this. Mona! Well, the last time we saw her, she was dead. What is going on here? Anyway. Yeah, we can't go. Well, I mean, I could try to go up there, but. If you think nothing can get to you, you're lying to yourself. At best, you're temporarily dead. A lightning bolt can reanimate you without a warning. Oh, really? What are you. The way you. Victor Frankenstein over here or something? Yeah, we could chase after her, but. But yeah, we have to. I don't know why they let you go into this room and check it out. There's nothing in here, so. Oh, well. Yeah, we, what are we, uh, the Frank, uh, Frankenstein's monster over here? Getting hit with lightning? Yeah, actually, let's, let's switch to shotgun just for fun. My backup had arrived, but the cleaners were slipping away, making a run for it. Yeah, I gotta murder them all. Even though I'm supposed to be a cop, and I'm supposed to, like, uh, obviously try to bring them all in. But you know how the situation goes. Oh. Oh, whoops. No, that didn't work. Ah, no. <laughs> if you mess up, it's it's kind of funny when you think about it. Dudes. I guess it was just the one guy. Uh-oh. Not that over. Sorry, I wasn't even watching it to see how it worked, but yeah, he knocked something. Uh, he basically knocked it over with that, so we're just chasing after him now. They already backed up? Oh, right, they were the cleaners, so. Get it! Go! Max! 
You all right? Damn it. Hey, we're working together on this. You got sloppy pain. You screwed up. It's unacceptable that she's dead. You can do better. I played it as business as usual. But everything had changed the moment those elevator doors opened to reveal Mona. Annie Finn was a licensed gunsmith, licensed dealer in firearms. Right. The property owned by Vladimir Lem. Three groups. One, DOAs who had connections to Russian OC. Identified as Finn's employees. Two, the Mafia. And three, the clowns wearing the cleaning company jumpsuits. They mentioned a name, Kaufman. This one's evil. It has only started. I don't like it. I don't like it a bit. It's yours, Payne. It makes no sense. For you, Winterson, homicide. Sebastian Gate. It's gonna be all over the news. The Senator? Winterson was the ideal. What the job was all about. Someone to look up to. Bravora knew it, too. We got lucky. There's an eyewitness. She hovered over my shoulder, whispering warnings. I didn't want to listen. Mona was the suspect in Winterson's case. I didn't tell them I had seen her. I wanted to stall. Maybe it was because she was alive when everyone else kept dying on me. Survivor's guilt washed away. Detective Winterson's phone. Give me that. Your boyfriend. The computer search on the squeaky cleaning company and Kaufman had come up empty. Well, wow, looks like uh, Winterson's in the, the fray. I wonder how she comes to her demise, but uh, we'll find out eventually. But anyway, we enter part part one, The Darkness Inside, Chapter 2, A Criminal Mastermind. Yeah, Mona has popped into the picture, so now now immediately Max Payne starts simping for her. No, we, we, we have a reason. I just like making fun of stuff like that. Yeah, it's a typical horrible old detective. Gets in with the dangerous... I needed to talk to Vlad, get his version. Be the bearer of bad news on Annie Finn. Vlad had bought the old Ragnarok nightclub. He was renovating it into a trendy restaurant, vodka. Mona's appearance had triggered a dislocation, schizophrenia. I felt elation, but with it, fear that all the past evils had come along for the ride. Vlad! Mark! 911! Bad guys with big guns! They've got me pinned down at the entrance hall. Could use some help. Could use it now. I had to find another way to reach Vlad. No time to call backup. My case had a life of its own. I got in through the back door. Memories of my previous visit here lurked in the shadows. A musty smell under the coat of new paint. Ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to present Max Payne, New York's finest, with the biggest mobster body count ever. Dearest guests, prepare to die. Max, I'd love to come and welcome you, but I'm busy dodging bullets and hiding under a desk at the moment. Well, it looks like Vlad's in a bit of trouble, and, uh, yeah, apparently we don't have enough time to call for backup, even though there's radios inside of our car to say, hey, we got backup, but whatever. But can we get through this uh, uh, crazy vodka place that resembles a church? Will it resemble what happened in the previous game? Will Vlad fall to the the, uh, the guns of the foes, or will Max come in like a ra uh, uh, high angel to save this demon? Find out next time in the next episode of Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.